Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to make sponges in Blender. And actually, we're just going to be making a sponge material that we can apply to any object that's completely procedural, it's seamless, etc. And before we actually get into any of this tutorial, you can download this material with many, many more settings than what I'm going to show you. So it's already this pre made thing that it just has sliders that you can uh, control and not really mess with the nodes. If you want that, you can get that over at the Blender Market. But now let's get into the tutorial, and I'll show you the very basics of how to make this. So again, full version over at Blender Market. Let's get to it. So the first thing we need to do is set up our scene in a nice way so we can actually work and make our sponge. And what I like to do is I like to go to the camera view. I'm going to delete this cube and replace it with a UV sphere since that's what I like as our visualizer. Now in the render tab, we're going to do a couple things. First of all, we're going to be using cycles because we're going to be using displacement. So that's um, the render engine to use. Then we are going to change over to GPU because that's faster for me and make sure to turn on experimental. Reason being, we're going to be using adaptive subdivision, which means it's going to subdivide depending on how close it is to the camera. And that's an experimental feature. So go to the modifiers tab and add a subsurf with adaptive, which is going to make it perfectly smooth. But just in case, you can uh, make it shade smooth. Okay, next, uh, shading workspace. We need to go to the world tab and let's uh, see rendered view. Uh, you can see right now we just have a standard scene with a light. What I like to do is add an HDRI just so we have better uh, light interaction and everything works or looks better. So what we're going to do is with this background node, hit Control T, assuming you have Node Wrangler. Uh, if you don't, you can just add an environment texture. You don't need all the other nodes. And then we're going to click Open and then just load any HDRI that you have. HDRI Haven is a great place to get those for free. Okay, cool. Now Render tab, Film transparent there we go and now we have our uh, scene set up we have hdri lighting but we don't need to see the hdri since we made it invisible so now onto the material at least the basic the basics of it so i'm going to make a new material i'm going to call it sponge and we're basically going to build off this principled bsdf over here so the first thing i want to do is kind of add pores to the sphere kind of like a sponge would have pores so just circles all around it to do that, there are a bunch of ways, but I'm going to do a Voronoi. So just add a Voronoi texture and we can view that. And you can see it just has this nice uh, design to it, but we need to turn these into circles. And the trick for that is you add a color ramp node. And then I'm going to take the second handle over here, so position one, and then drag that downwards. And you can see it kind of gives us these black circles. And the reason that works is just because of how Voronoi no, uh, noise is calculated, and you don't need to know the specifics, but once you know that, it makes sense that uh, circles emerge. Okay, so we have these nice circles. You can, of course, you know, pull the other handle to get them sharper or whatever, uh, but this is fine. We now want to have this affect the normal mapping, so it kind of looks like indents. To do that, I'm going to use a bump node for our conversion. So color goes into the height. I mean, you could uh, do an RGB to black and white here, but whatever. We're just going to put color into a factor or into a single value input. Then we're going to take this normal and put it in the normal. So pretty easy. We converted it with a bump node. And now it looks like this, which kind of looks like it has dents in it. Uh, main thing is that these are huge. So we just take this scale, bring it up. And now we have like a lot of tiny pores. And you can, again, still affect every single circle here. Uh, using this call ramp node. So we have a pretty procedural uh, approach already, so I'm just going to keep this at 25, let's say. Okay, next is making it look more like a sponge, so in terms of color and all that. So for base color, I'm just going to choose a yellowish, yellowish green, I don't know, just pick whatever color you want for your sponge. And then we're going to make it a bit rougher since, you know, sponges are very rough and not shiny. So let's do like 0.75 maybe. And then specular, which, is, again, you don't really need to know what this means, but it's going to affect how it looks. So if we have zero, kind of looks like that. If it has one, it's very kind of reflective in some sense. So I'm going to keep this at 0.4. Okay, so now we have the base of our sponge, and we could probably do a couple more things, but that's fine. So now what we want to do is add a bit more detail other than these pores, because the whole thing is bumpy. At least it's supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a... Any kind of noise, but noise texture works fine. And if we view it, it looks like this. I'm just going to bump up the detail so it looks a bit sharper. And then we're going to make it very, very small, which means pick a big scale. And you can see now we have a lot of fine detail when we picked a large number for our scale. 
And what we want to do is also have this affect our normal mapping. So I'm just going to add a math node right here. We're going to add these two together. So now both of these are contributing. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah. So you can see now we have our noise and we also have our pores, but it kind of looks like they're equally powerful, whereas we want the pores to kind of have the bigger emphasis. And that makes sense because right now we're just adding them. So to fix that, I'm just going to duplicate shift D, convert this over to a multiply node. And right now, if we make this zero, it's going to get rid of it. If we make it one, it's going to be the same power. So you just kind of want to find something in between. So you can, you know, pick what you want. I'm probably going to do 0.4. Seems fine. Yeah. And we kind of still want to make our pores a bit more visible. So let me bring down to scale to make them bigger. And we can also play with our kind of fall off of these circles. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we can, uh, there are more ways to add emphasis to this. So before displacement, what we're going to do is we're going to mess a bit more with this base color. Because right now it's just yellow and there's no variety. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an RGB node. And just control C over this. So just hover, control C, control V, copies the color. Or you could do it more manually. So right now I'm just going to plug this into here. It doesn't change anything. And we're just affecting our base color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this. I'm going to mix RGB this. And we're going to mix it with an ambient occlusion node, which is just going to have shadows wherever there's like divots. So right now if we view it, uh, you're going to see it's kind of like perfectly white. Uh, there's no ambient occlusion going on. And that's because our geometry is a sphere. And all, everything we saw with our pores and everything is in our normal mapping. So we just need to take our normal plug it into here. And now the ambient occlusion can account for that. And you see that it actually has some shadowing. And you can, uh, you know, have this be a bit smoother. So in our modifiers, um, for our adaptive subsurf, maybe you can bring up the level so everything smooths out just a bit. And generally, it's a better idea to not start off with a sphere, but instead with a cube that you subsurf, but that's fine. And you can bring up the samples. Um, but for now, we don't care too much about this. So what I'm going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to take the color, put it in here as well. And instead of mixing, we're going to do a multiplication. And here we go. And we can bring up the factor to one. Now, you may not have seen what that did uh, with the mix RGB with multiply with one, but we can make it more obvious. So before this ambient inclusion reaches here, I'm just going to add in a math node. I'm going to set this to power. Uh, you could also do multiply technically, but power is nice. And you see if we have this as zero, it will look like this. If we have this as one, it looks a bit darker. And you just want to think of this as it kind of has more depth to it. And it might look too intense, uh, depending on your project. So yeah, here we have it really intense. Now it looks more like a moon, a lunar surface or whatever. But you can just pick how like uh, intense you want this ambient occlusion to be. So I'm going to keep this at around like point six or something somewhere between zero and one okay cool and now the final detail for again this basic material you can buy uh, the one i made to also support me um, the last thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to add some basic uh, displacement and this is not going to be normal mapping this is going to be true displacement which means it's going to deform our geometry which is why we had this adaptive subsurf so i'm going to take this displacement hook it up and then for our height uh, we're going to use the same thing as before. So I'm just going to plug in the height. And you see it kind of messes up our shading, but doesn't actually displace anything. And the reason is we need to go to our material. So this is the sponge material. And under settings, it should be set to bump only by default. Uh, we want this as displacement and bump, which means, as you can see, it displaces it by too much. But So just take the scale, bring it down. And I'm also going to set the mid-level to 1, I believe. So let's see. So this is with displacement, this is without. So it's kind of the same sphere, but now with uh, actual uh, depth in the geometry, which is why the pores look darker, because there's actual shadows going on. So if you do that, you don't necessarily need the ambient occlusion, but it, you know you could, you could have both. Um, okay, let's see, what else? I am going to maybe make the scale a bit you know, less intense, divided by two. And again, you can control this number to, you know, decide the quality of your sponge. I'm maybe going to divide by 2 one more time. Or no, let's just go down to 0 
And there we go. I think I'm pretty happy with this. So already we have a lot of control over this. It's completely procedural. There are no seams, um, etc. And we can always change the sponge color. So if we want it to be a uh, red sponge, now we have a red sponge, etc. And because we were just making this as a material, not like a model with displacement and all that, uh, we can actually just delete this and then pick any other kind of model like a monkey. That's pretty arbitrary. I'm just going to make our monkey again, add your subdivision surface with adaptive if you want good uh, displacement, and then you just apply your sponge material. And you can see it just uh, wraps perfectly. There are no seams because it's completely mathematical, procedural. Um, we're not wrapping any 2D image on anything. And you can see now our monkey looks pretty cool. Um, looks spongy. And you can do this with any model and mess with these sliders. So there you go. Another tutorial. Again, if you want a... Um, I, actually, I can just show you. I can show you even though I probably showed you a preview. I think it's in here. If you just want a single node that does all this for you and you don't need to mess with anything, um, like, you know, you can control the pore strength, the pore scale. So, you know, bring that up. Now you have more pores and, you know, just mess with it that way. Uh, make sure to support me over at the Blender Market. But otherwise, uh, the best way, other than getting the product if you want to, to support these tutorials to make sure I can keep making them because that is, uh, I don't know, it's not looking too possible. But... Uh, the best way to do that is by um, donating over at my Patreon. So I have a Patreon page. Uh, you can support me there. You do get uh, benefits as well, depending on what tier you pick. So it's not it's kind of like a donation, but it's also um, you're buying something as well. So hopefully you are interested in that. But otherwise, I've been Default Cube CG Matter. Bye-bye.